All right, so we've built our PHPP spaces within our Honeybee rooms. Uh, remember, in this case, it's a little bit weird, but room in this case refers to an entire floor. We used to call them zones. I think that made more sense, but you know, call them rooms now. Um, and within a room, you can have uh, many PHPP spaces. Um, and um, uh, so that's what we have here. We have a whole bunch of uh, individual spaces inside of our Honeybee rooms. And all of that TFA and, and volume information is, is sort of being pushed forwards through the model, which is, which is great. So, so let's look now at what this did to our PHP. So I'm going to come over here to my export to PHP, and let me turn on my PHP, and we'll let this uh, boot up for a second. And as soon as all of as soon as Excel boots up, and um, all of our information here gets written out to our Excel document, we'll take a look at what sort of results we're seeing now. What sort of values are we are we finding? Is our TFA and is our, our volume getting pushed through uh, correctly into, into our PHPP document here? So let me go to my Excel document here and let's take a look. Okay, so let me go to my let me go over to my verification first of all. Okay, so in my verification, yeah, so go to verification, and let's see. Okay, so we are getting treated floor area, 110 square meters. So that is flowing through properly. If we were to go to our areas worksheet, we would see that we now have that input of 110 square meters. So that's being calculated based on all of those floor areas and the TFA factors that we applied. So we know that the stair, for instance, is being excluded from this, as is that double height zone, because we uh, obviously didn't draw any area there. And then all the thicknesses of the walls are being omitted because we didn't include those in our floor plates that we that we drew there. So that's great. So the other really critical, so that's, that's really good. The other critical piece of information that we would like to um, get from these rooms, or spaces rather, is going to be in the ventilation worksheet. It's going to be this... Uh, net air volume, so the interior net air volume, uh, known as the known as the VN50. This is the this is the actual air inside of the space, which is which is activated during the the um, air tightness test, the blower door test. So here you can see we're getting an input of 288 cubic meters. So that number is being determined by all of the geometry, the space geometry, which was created when we input those floor plates. Well, that's interesting because we didn't give it any we didn't give it any ceiling heights or anything like that. So how is it calculating this information just from floor heights or just from floor plates? And is this the right number? Remember when we were looking before? Let me um, let me go back to our grasshopper scene. Let me turn that off. Remember when we were looking before? If I was to come over here and take a look at the actual space geometry by hooking up a, a BREP output to our space BREPs for the second floor and our first floor. Right, we have a we have a gap there. Maybe we can make that a little more explicit. Uh, material, or let me do swatch, I guess. Swatch, 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 there we go. Um, and we'll do that one, and let's make this one like kind of bluish, and then we'll do the same thing for our upper floor, and we'll make this one like whatever dark bluish. So we have we have our lower floor geometry, and we have our upper floor geometry, but we're missing this whole double height area. In addition, where do these heights come from? How, how, do, where, how does it know what to do? How does it know how to input the heights for these various spaces? Well, so a couple things. So first of all, this PHPP spaces is going to create these interior space geometries based on a standard 2.5 meters, 8.2 feet of head height in a space. So that's going to be a sort of default so if you don't supply any other information, it's just going to take your floor plate and extrude it up two and a half meters. That's going to be the that's going to be the default. That's going to be the standard for calculating all of this internal volume 
information. But of course, that's not always going to be true. So we want some ability to customize that. And the most obvious place where that's not true is this big double height area. So how are we going to deal with this sort of big double height area? Well, let me turn off, let me turn off these previews for a second. And um, let, me, uh, let me actually hide all of this as well. And let's come in here and take a look. So somehow I want to be able to tell the, tell the system here that this living room is actually, it's actually two stories high. Well, sort of. There's a, there's a one-story portion over here underneath the, underneath the bedroom above. This is kind of L-shaped. And then there's another piece here, which is sort of underneath the landing. It's actually kind of a really weird shape. So how are we going to explain to PHPP? what the right volume is for this room. Well, the way that we've built it right now is that you just draw it. So just draw the space shape, and you're going to input the geometry of the room or the space here in this spaces geometry input. So we have the ability in our PHPP spaces to input both floor areas and more detailed surface or interior space shape geometry. So let's take a look at what that would look like. So let me come over here. Let me make this a little smaller. Let me come to my interiors, and I'm going to make a new sublayer and call this um, room shape or room. Yeah, we'll call it room shape, shapes, something like that. And I'll make that my default layer. So I made a new room shapes here. And what we want to do is we want to actually model the space shape of this room. So let me uh, reset. And all right, so to do that, I'm actually going to turn on my section drawing to give me a sense of the, the right heights. And so first of all, let's see, maybe I'll take this and I will extrude, extrude this up. There's all sorts of different ways we could do this, of course. But let's say that we're going to extrude this up. And we're going to start by going to the bottom of the floor. So maybe that's we'll, we'll sort of extrude up the area there that far, and then um, and then what? And then let's say that we've got whoops. And then we've got we're gonna have another. Oh no! Don't do that. Here we go. And let's say we've got this, and it's gonna be this shape here. And let me join these together. And let's extrude this up now. Is that right? I guess we want this to be a little bit further over. So let me do sub object selection here, control and shift. And I need to pull this edge over a bit until it's in the right position. So I'm going to pull it over until I go the right direction, hit tab to lock the direction. Whoops, that's not right. Stop it. Hit. Oh my god, what did I do? Oh, there's two edges there. I see. Ugh, I should never extrude anything. Uh, yeah. Try that again. There we go. I'll do it this way. Hit tab. And then we'll bring this over and snap to here. Oh, I guess that. Oh, I guess that does align. Sorry, I was thinking that this was underneath that floor. Okay, well, fine. All right. So let's just move this over there. All right. So this element we want to then extrude up to the second floor. So we'll say extrude, extrude surface, and we'll pull it up to the second floor there. And then since this is our surface, our ceiling, let's just go ahead and move this up to the top. OK, sort of. Uh, let me hide my section, hide my floor areas, and hide my uh, hide that just, to, just so we can see what we've got here. So obviously, a really weird space shape, right? Very, very peculiar. And let me complete this. And so then we might want to go through and um, let me explode all of this. And then let's just go ahead and um, planar union the individual elements here. So I'll just planar union these so that it's all, uh, so it's less geometry. And I'm just coming through. I'm just selecting everything that's in plane and doing a, a planar union command there. And I'll do the last here. OK, so this is the shape of that room. It's a weird one. So I'm going to select everything here. And I'm going to type join to join all those surfaces together into a single poly surface. Notice it joins it all into a poly surface. 
And importantly, this is really important for using this sort of method, notice there's no bottom. There's no, there's no cap on the bottom. This is an open planar surface. And if I was to bring back my TFA surfaces, notice that it aligns perfectly with this TFA surface. So the way that this component is going to work is it's going to take this geometry. So let's take this room and let's reference it into our grasshopper scene. We'll call this um, living room. And we'll reference this. I'll say set one BREP. There we go. And now this is going to get fed into this spaces geometry. And when it gets fed into the spaces geometry, this component is going to try and join it with each of these floor surfaces in turn. And once it can, when it successfully joins it with one of these floor surfaces, it knows, oh, that's that room geometry for that floor surface. So because it's trying to do that joining operation, you have to leave the bottom off of any of this room geometry. I know it's not really ideal, is it? But if you have a better method, if you have a better algorithm there, let me know. We're happy to give it a try. Um, that was the best that we could come up with instead of, because you don't want to get into a situation where you have to like list all of your floor surfaces and list all of your room geometry in exactly the right order so that it knows which room geometry goes with which surface. Um, instead, we're just doing this sort of um, join test, which makes it a little bit more automatic. In any event, um, yeah, if you have a better idea, let us know. We'd love to try and implement it. So let me turn that off. Let me turn off my room shapes there. And now, if I was to turn my preview back on here, notice that most of the spaces are that standard 2.5 meters, but the middle space is double height. Let me bring back up my, my second store, my second floor. And so clearly, we should actually do the same thing for our um, for our stair, shouldn't we? We should do the same thing for the stair, and maybe we'd even have a like a sloped bottom for it or something. So we could we could make the geometry as intricate as we need to for our um, for our purposes here. Uh, but this allows us to make pretty complicated shapes, and you can you can pass in. You know, we're, we're passing in a single space shape here. You can pass in a list of them. You know, you could do multiple B reps and pass in as many as you want into that into that solver there. So in any event, what is this going to do now that now that all of this is flowing through? Well, let's take a look at our PHPP. Let's see what happens when we boot up our PHPP. Let's see if it changes any of our information there. All right, and let's see our PHPP. So there we go. So our, our revised volume there should flow through. I think we were at 280 before, 320 now. So um, we're, we're getting that updated volume information. If we go back to our areas, we're still at 110, right? We didn't change the, we didn't change the TFA. The only thing we changed was the volume by adding that big missing piece there. So that um, room shape solver is powerful. You can use that to, you know, create all quite intricate interior spaces. You see quite a funny, funny shape here, provided, again, provided that it's able to join the space shape of the room to at least one TFA surface. And that's how it's going to, that's how it's going to determine who, which, um, which space that space shape belongs to. So it has to be open on the bottom, and it has to be able to join to one of those TFA surfaces. So we've added quite a lot of information here. Um, we've, we're now getting our TFA. We're getting our volume. We've got all of our PHPP spaces flowing through. Um, we've started to assign some flow rate information. But when we come back in our next series of videos, we'll turn our attention more explicitly to the question of fresh air ventilation systems. So we'll look at HRVs and ERVs. Um, uh, obviously, that's going to be an absolutely critical piece of any passive house workflow. So we will look at um, we'll look at how we assign that information and um, uh, uh, how how we're going to take advantage of this detailed room by room. Uh, 
uh, a breakdown that we have in our model now and how we can use that to give us a tremendous amount of information in our in our PHPP and manage a, a lot of this information on a room level basis. So as I said, we'll come back in the next video and take a look at the fresh air ventilation now that we have a pretty good handle on using our, our TFA and, and PHPP spaces components.